a, uh, one of the ways that we can work on someone with low back pain. If we uh, look at the spine here, uh, this would be looking at somebody from behind. I'm going to set the spine down here on the table. Sometimes folks have pain in the side of the lower back, not dead in the middle, but off to the side. And that is pain generated from the SI joint or sacroiliac joint. And so how we work on that, we have to restore the motion of that joint. And a great tool to use is the arthrostam. And what we do is we just palpate or feel to see which is moving and which is not. And we find the areas that are stuck. And we just want to restore that motion. As we restore the motion, the body then restores that nervous input from the joint up to the brain so that it moves normally and feels a lot better. So that's one of the ways we can work on SI joint pain or low back pain that's off on the side. Trying to get to the root cause of the, of, the, of the pain, which is usually a bone that has some form of, of, of dysfunction. In other words, it's not working correctly. With a chiropractic adjustment, we will locate areas of the spine that are very stiff, that aren't moving correctly, or maybe jammed out of position. And the job is to get them functioning again so that they can flex, so they can move. Physical therapy doesn't the best. Uh, so chiropractic is a great choice. Uh, after, the, after, we restore, after we do restore the joint dysfunction, physical therapy can be a great option because they're going to do some strengthening exercises. You'll learn... That's really what they're they're really um, they're really trained for is the strengthening and rehabilitation of stuff. But you can't do that over top of joint dysfunction, and so that's where chiropractic. Dr. Owens, I was wondering why sometimes uh, nausea and back pain are totally you know come together, like when um, someone's pregnant, why they get nauseous as well as have back pain. Right, Les. Um, well, pregnancy or no pregnancy, with back pain and nausea the nerves that exit the back here go around, sometimes around the rib cage, sometimes through, but they go, do feed and tie into the stomach. And so we do have the nerves from the back controlling the viscera, the stomach, the, the, uh, the small intestines, the large intestines. So, with that tie-in occurring, if you have a nerve affected here in the back, it can cause things to happen up front. All right, Dr. Owens, uh, I had another question here. Uh, what can I do to prevent back pain from uh, returning after I've had a few chiropractic visits, I'm feeling good, you know, what, what can I do to prevent, prevent it from coming back? Right. Um, very important question. Uh, I get it a lot. People ask me, what can I do myself? Uh, to keep this to keep this thing at bay or to keep it from coming back, and it almost always boils down to uh, being active, doing doing uh, stretching, strengthening uh, exercises and things like this. Oddly enough, I'll, I'll give exercises to a lot of people, but it's it's a uh, it's a precious few that actually go and do them. But the ones that do them do find that they they have much less pain. Uh, I will, during the course of the care, I will give lots of exercises and stretches for you to do. Okay. I was wondering how long it takes usually before someone notices that, uh, you know, their back pain's diminished and, you know, they're able to function properly in life. Right. Uh, well, proper function in life can sometimes take a while. That's, that's a matter of getting the, the ligaments and muscles strengthened up around the in injury site. Uh, for example, let's say a low back pain, it, that can sometimes take a little while to restore full function. However, pain relief sometimes, uh, sometimes occurs after the very first visit. Uh, typically, a patient will have some relief after their first visit and a large amount of relief after uh, five to seven visits. Okay. Dr. Owens, I was wondering if there's any test that, um, that you can take or ways you can determine whether back pain is really serious or, you know, sometimes you work out in the backyard and your back hurts a little bit. Is it, you know, it's not really that serious? I mean, how can you tell if it's something you really need to go see a chiropractor about? Okay. Uh, first off, 
Uh, back pain, you know, if it's a sore, sore muscle from working out in the yard, raking leaves, or vacuuming a house, that's going to go away in a day or two. That's obviously not serious. You're going to know that. But all back pain that, you know, that is, is more of a pain and not like a muscle soreness is always serious. Um, there's a cause, something that is creating that. And if left uh, to its own devices and not handled, not not uh, where you haven't figured out what's causing it and we're working to correct it, it's going to develop into arthritis down the road. There are a number of tests that we can do. They're called orthopedic tests, and that just means they're joint tests that we put the joints in, uh, or move your body in certain positions that give me information about what's hurt and what's serious and, and what's not as serious. I was wondering how much bed rest should I get while I'm suffering back pain, you know, if I'm being treated for back pain, uh, how, how much time should I spend in bed and all that? Uh, as far as bed rest goes, with with a serious case of back pain, it, it's good to probably be off your feet uh, for one to two days, three days, sometimes maybe even more. Um, because we don't want to re re injure, re tear it while we're while we're doing the adjustments to get things back in place. So it's variable, and during that bed rest period, you want to be icing all the time. Could my work environment be affecting my back pain at all? Uh, absolutely, work environments can vary. Of course, um, the one we see here in Bellevue a lot, uh, being close to Microsoft, is the uh, computer posture, where someone is here or looking into the computer all day. The head goes forward. They're sitting all day and they never move. Uh, that creates a pretty, pretty uh, standard pain here in the shoulder blades, uh, in in back, um, upper back kind of uh, naggy pain that's always there. Uh, and then of course they go back to work the next day and it's there again. So that's very correctable. Uh, as far as other work environments, um, if someone is, uh, you know, any repetitive motion with limited ranges can cause back pain and our, our, our job really at that point is to address how to how to get them doing other things during the rest of the day. For the computer guys we might have them stretch their pecs backwards a lot of times during the day because we have to move our body in all directions for it to be pain free. Dr. Owens, I was uh, wondering what causes back pain? There are many causes of back pain and that's why you really need a professional to evaluate it. It could be something as simple as a muscle uh, tear, uh, which will heal up all by itself. If that's the case, it goes away in a, a week or two and never comes back. Uh, if, if it's something more severe, the body generally will tell you. Uh, it'll something that, be something that persists. It could be something that where the ligament's been damaged or a bone has, itself has been jammed out of place, is stuck there, and is, is compressing uh, onto nerves, um, and that needs to be evaluated by a professional, uh, especially a chiropractor. Uh, but there's many causes of back pain, um, and everyone, Dr. Owens, Chiropractic of Bellevue, hope you're having a great day. I wanted to show you a few quick things you could do for your low back while you're sitting all day at work. Uh, there's a couple of really great stretches that will stretch the hips, the glutes, and keep pressure off that sciatic nerve as it goes down the leg. The first one, and you can just do this while you're sitting right at work, is you will spread your legs apart as far as you can, keep the, keep the lower leg fairly parallel to each other. And as you keep your, backs, keep your back fairly straight, you arch forward and push out. As you arch forward and push out, you're going to do this in one second pulses, I like to say. It's, it's better than just sitting there and holding it. You can hold it, but it's, it's a little better for the body if you'll just you pulse forward and then come out of it and relax. Pulse forward, come out of it and relax. You're going to do that for about 12 to 15 times or until the area feels nice and warm. Now this one you should feel in the hip joints. Well, Dr. Owens, chiropractic of Bellevue. Hope you're having a great day. I want to show you a quick stretch for the hip that you can do at work while you're sitting. Maybe you're sitting at the computer and need to take a little study break. This will keep some of the pressure off the hips, allow them to be more mobile. Also alleviating the low back pain. When you, when you, when you do this stretch, you just spread the legs apart, lower legs parallel, 
and you're going to just pulse forward. Keep the lower back nice and straight, and you're just going to pulse in. Pulse in with the stretch. You'll feel the stretch, and then you relax. Pulse in, you'll feel the stretch, and relax. You put slight pressure out on your knees. Do this 12, 15 times. You can do it 3 to 4 times a day if you like. It would be great for the hip joint capsules and low back pain. I'm Dr. Owens. Good morning everyone, Dr. Owens, Chiropractic of Bellevue. Hope you're having a great day. I want to show you a quick stretch for the hip that you can do at work while you're sitting. Maybe you're sitting at the computer and need to take a little study break. This will keep some of the pressure off the hips, allow them to be more mobile. Also alleviating the low back pain. When you, when you, when you do this stretch, you just spread the legs apart, lower legs parallel, and you're going to just pulse forward. Keep the lower back nice and straight and you're just going to pulse in, pulse in with the stretch, you'll feel the stretch, and then you relax, pulse in, you'll feel the stretch, and relax, you put slight pressure out on your knees, do this 12, 15 times, you can do it 3 to 4 times a day if you like, it would be great for the hip joint capsules and low back pain. I'm Dr. Owens. Good afternoon everyone, I'm Dr. Owens, chiropractic of Bellevue, hope you're having a great day today. Here at the office, one of the ways we use to rehabilitate lower backs is a device called the wobble chair. And the wobble chair has, it's meant to bend and flex and move back and forth. One of the, one of the characteristics of discs is that to remain healthy, these are filled with water on a healthy disc. They need to flex and move. And with this movement, it brings water and helps the disc stay healthy. The water is pulled in. So, Dr. Pettibon invented the wobble chair, and in order to simulate that movement, and all you do is you get on it and you spend five to ten minutes wobbling on the chair, making the chair move back and forth, forward and backwards. As it moves forward and backwards, pulling nice, healthy nutrients into the disc, pumping waste products out. And a lot of patients really love this. And you just get on the chair and you work it, you work circles, and it's super effective for maintaining uh, young, healthy discs for a long, healthy life. Thank you. I'm Dr. Owens. Have a great day.